Batman and Robin is a film by Joel Schumacher, released in 1997 and featuring a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Uma Thurman, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It should have been a smash hit, but it was quite the contrary. The film received swarms of negative reviews and was actually so bad that Warner Brothers cancelled the planned sequel. What was it in this movie that turned so many people off? Was it Clooney's bat nipples? Most adults will say that it was too jokey, it didn't make a lot of sense. It wasn't truthful to the characters. Most children will say they didn't like the parts where things moved too slow, or the scary parts, or the parts where things just didn't make sense, or they just didn't understand. Since his debut in 1939, there have been many incarnations of Batman, and he's famously been able to appeal to both children and adults. This film tries to combine parts of Batman that adults like and parts that children like, to form one perfect Batman, but all it really does is complicate things. Batman and Robin contradicts its characters and lessens the quality of its plot by trying to appeal equally to both children and adults. Batman is a character who was originally created for the entertainment of adults, and the world he lives in shows that. It can be dark, violent, depressing, and serious. But like any fictional character, his stories can be adapted for children, and his world will become bright, peaceful, happy, and goofy. This film tries to make a world that is the equal combination of both, one that's brightly dark, peacefully violent, happily depressing, and seriously goofy. That, my friends, is a paradox. It's possible for a world to exist that has contradicting aspects, but one should be more present than the other. If they're both equally a part of the world, then the world won't be clear in what it wants to be. For example, look at Batman. He's shown to be a strong, mysterious crime fighter who handles situations seriously. But his actual presentation depicts him to be silly in serious situations, making public appearances, and at times can come across as clueless. When you try to combine two different versions of the same character to make a new character, whatever doesn't fit the traits of one version will be seen as a contradiction to that version, instead of a completely new character, which is what happened here. A good example is Bane historically one of Batman's greatest and scariest enemies, possessing super strength, is incredibly violent, and known most famously for his ability to break Batman's back. And that would have meant I'd never feel your spine crumble in my hands. That's a little too dark to show to kids, so the solution for the movie was to not make him talk at all. This lessened his character and made him seem less scary. The main villain of this film is Mr. Freeze, but the problem is it's very unclear what his character is supposed to be like. He's presented as a serious villain, wronged by the world, creating a hatred for others. He isn't afraid to kill. The movie portrays this quite well, but it also has him spouting puns about ice, wearing polar bear pajamas, and singing songs with his henchmen, and that makes it unclear why he is the way he is or why he's doing what he's doing. Oh, and there's also this. I'm feeling hot. You're the most perfect man I've ever known. What do you say we heat things up? Mm. There's actually quite a bit of sexualization in this film, ranging from Batgirl suit up with her bat butt, very detailed bat breasts, and her incredibly unfunctional bat go-go boots, to Poison Ivy as a character. Poison Ivy's only character trait is that she's sexy and alluring, but the film tries to step away from that as it progresses, because keep in mind, this was a film intended for children as well as adults. And eventually she becomes a character only there to deposit exposition. Mm -hmm. If we step away from characters for a moment, we'll see another reason that this film wasn't well accepted among audiences. And it was the fact that it was live action, but maintained a very cartoonish feel throughout. Live action superhero movies are typically live action because they're typically intended for adults. Live action allows for realistic movement and action sequences, which can give off a more serious feel and make the movie seem more realistic or believable. Cartoons and other forms of animation are usually saved for children's films where the pace may need to be a little more rapid and the character movement and designs complement the tone of the film. In other words, because cartoons don't need to handle situations very realistically, 
they are taken less seriously. But when it comes to live action, no matter what the character is like, they're going to be limited by their physical abilities. In Batman and Robin, we get characters and a world that possess an animated sort of spirit, but are stuck in a world of live action. Basically, by combining these two different formats, the film denies both of them their individual aspects that makes them enjoyable. Now, please don't misunderstand me. It's not impossible for children to enjoy movies intended for adults. Likewise, it's not impossible for adults to enjoy movies intended for children, because they have a set tone, and when people go into the film, they'll have an idea of what to expect. Batman and Robin isn't sure who the audience is supposed to be. So it isn't fully a children's film or fully an adult film, making it only partially able to cater to both of the groups. And each group will have different expectations for what they want the movie to be. Which results in both sides just being let down. Batman can go down any path, so long as he sticks to one path at a time. By trying to straddle two paths at once, Batman and Robin fails to meet the expectations of both of its intended audiences. Thanks for playing. I'm Ryan Curry. Thank you for listening.